<laughs> I, Alicia, you weren't supposed to let him know. I just wanted to get the the honest Gregoire for a minute there. He Uh-oh. might have started swearing. <laughs> no, I, I see the yellow lights, but, you know, that writes its life. We, we always swear. And yeah. for some reason, this is set on public. It just <laughs> broadcasts that we're uh, we're recording. Good evening, Dusters. This is your host, Nick, for another episode of Dust Boot Camp. And joining me as always, I have Greg. Hello. And Alicia. Hello. Of Dust USA. And we are going to be continuing on with the Axis Platoons, uh, the overpowered uh, the NIS that it is. Um, <clears throat> I mean, uh, the You're totally right. balanced and not unfair <laughs> at all. List. The, the right word is broken. Broken, no, broken. broken. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 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 okay. I know. I know you can't. You know, freely admit what you really feel. You have to give the company line. But I don't know the, whether the, the company line is published by you or not. I know you have to give it. <laughs> The first, the first platoon we're going to talk about tonight is really a platoon that will make you win games and lose friends. So if, when you play it, know the consequences of it. It's going to be a very, very tough platoon for everyone facing you when you play it. So, yeah, no, no. I, <laughs> we, some platoons are, are really meant for the fluff. Some are really meant for the crunch. And this one is crunchy as hell. So... Are you talking the Endac Grenadier platoon? Oh yes, I am. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so so this is similar to the one that we talked about for the Vermont. Yes, it is, but it's uh, this time it 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 serves the Endac, and the Endac is a pretty different army from the Vermont. Uh, first, they are Armor One, uh, uh, and, they have, like and they have units that are really uh, have a different usage. Uh, and they have some units that really shine when you give them the ability to reactivate or uh, or to to have this kind of uh, extra uh, actions with the officers. All right. So I guess first of all, we should hit on what exactly the the ability so, is or the platoon and all that. So the platoon requires that you load seriously because you're going to need three combat units and one common one common unit on endac units and it's going to be battle grenadier or tank hunter mainly for the combat units with a small introduction of heavy grenadier for the third unit and then on, as the common unit you're going to have uh, either one of the two officers for the endac so the desert fox or tina and Ian, or you're going to have to take the endac command squad so right. really, really simple composition. Uh, not that expensive because the, the units are cheap. So it's really easy to set up and you can even complete it with something else uh, or put so many support units in it that it becomes completely ridiculous. Uh, but uh, the platoon advantage says that the platoon leader of this platoon uh, may perform a get moving your bunch of monkey special action targeting an endac grenadier unit or Wehrmacht Heavy Grenadier unit in or supporting the platoon as a third action each time it activates. Right. And uh, and that's where I, I it didn't click until I read it just a second ago. It, in the Wehrmacht version, it's you have one that's the just the Sturm Grenadiers yep. and another that's the Heavy Grenadiers. Exactly. This one has the 
two of them together. Well, not the Sturm, but the uh, Endak Grenadiers. Exactly. So, so the the disadvantages for in the Vermach one are actually taken out. You know where that's it was. Exactly the, that's exactly the spirit. It also adds to the fact that uh, as a common unit, you have one of the best officers in the whole game with the Desert Fox. Yes, uh, because he's not only an officer; he's also a general. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> not that not that titles actually matter in this game. <laughs> well, no, but as an ability, it matters because that means that he has already a free officer special action each time he activates. Okay, and if he's joined uh, to a unit with an officer, meaning a common squad, which you will take for that. You will roll two dice when, att- when att- attempting officer special actions. All right. And then, so, he, so he gets a free officer action to begin with. So yeah. a reload, um, because you don't want to waste waste it on a get moving a bunch of monkeys. Uh-huh. Um, so he gets, you know, he can order a reload or something like that. Yep. Uh, with the command squad, he gets to roll two dice on it. Yes. And then at the end of it, so wait, if I'm doing my math right, you, you take Rommel and you get four actions. Well, you cannot take four actions ever in a game, but you're going to no? take three. But actually, it's not over. The, the fun only starts there. Now he has an ability called Desert Fox. The ability Desert Fox says that every time he reactivates a unit with a get moving your bunch of monkeys, the unit gains at the double for that activation. Well, what a fox. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the actual fox. So <laughs> that means <laughs> that, uh, for example, if you really want to, to really, really, really optimize your common, uh, your common role, you're going to put the desert fox inside a common squad, an endac common squad, and then you're going to put all these people in a common vehicle. Now you're going to have your free action with the Desert Fox because he's a general uh, to get a get a, a free uh, officer action. Then you're going to have your normal action, and then you're going to have a third action provided by the platoon to roll or get moving a bunch of monkeys. Because you roll two dice every time, okay, that mm-hmm. means that you're going to roll six dice. And all these dice are going to be re-rolled thanks to the common vehicle. <laughs> though, I mean, though though a command vehicle is, you know, an excellent choice, um, you really wouldn't even have to take one. No, it's just, it's just so that you protect them so that they cannot be targeted by a, a stupid sniper or these kind of things. Right. I mean, you know, <laughs> that, that definitely makes sense because... Uh, under under general, it says uh, join to a unit with an officer. So yep. you know, if, if you followed followed your order of operations, I take out the medic and then I take out the officer. Exactly. Uh, so that knocks Rommel down to not having his second die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, I I get it. I dig it. I hate it. Uh, I I'm gonna go uh, go post on the Facebook group. Angry rants. <laughs> Perfect. So you can put it in a Prince Luther, for example, which for 10 points will grant you an armor 3 vehicle with 6 HPs, command vehicle, and passenger 6. So really a minimum investment, and you will have an entire craft gun plus 3 machine guns. So really, it's really cheap. It's dirt cheap, and you have the best command unit ever on the table. Yeah. Uh, the only one that could start to rival with that would be eventually uh, Iron Joe from the SSU. Uh, but even then, it's not as good because the the combinations that you can have with Rommel, so the Desert Fox and the Command Squad and the rest of the army, as the platoon uh, puts it, is just insane. Because you were mentioning the reload, and the reload on a Tank Hunter Grandier Squad can really put a lot of hurt on any army because the five Panzer Faust that you shoot every round because they have been reloaded 
Mm -hmm. I would say I would say for free because really the action is so easy to get that it would be a shame not to do it. You know? Right. So you just do that and you have really an army that is extremely competitive, extremely efficient, and extremely destructive. Yeah, no, uh that's that is definitely some insanity. And then you when you have when you add in the fact, you know, even if you take out a command vehicle, you have in your heavy grenadiers, and you can even bring more of them. Yep. Um, you can bring, you know, several units if you want as the support. Um, so if you had more of them, you, with the command squad, you have a radio. Mm -hmm. So wherever Rommel is, if while he's with that command squad, he can be radioing his, you know, armor three guys to get moving you bunch of monkeys. You know, which yep. also... Yeah, that um, I could see how that could lose you friends. <laughs> now, granted, in in your setup, you were at twenty points with just Rommel and the uh, the the command squad. Well, you said the Panzer Prince. Uh, oh yeah, the Prince Luther. Prince Luther. Is it is it ten points for the command squad as well? Uh, it's eleven, I think, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so you're at thirty-one points. So if you're playing a hundred-point game, you are at thirty percent of your of your points. Um, and my only thought there is that's to try and ensure that you always have two dice when you roll the action, and then two dice when you re-roll the action if you manage to fail on both of those. Um, yeah. So. So that, now, I totally get it, you know, redundancy and all that, but that is kind of a large investment. It's 30 points, actually. So 10 points for the common squad, 10 points for the Desert Fox, 10 points for the vehicle. Right. Okay. So, you know, yeah. So it it's, would be... It's a huge chunk of your army, but it's the warranty that you're going to be able to reload your tank and talk, the Grenadier squad, that you're going to be able to reactivate them uh, probably on the same round. <laughs> Uh, or that you can take your heavy gun <laughs> assault squad and just launch them far away ahead so that they can shoot their insane amount of dice at any infantry that uh, presents itself. I mean, really, the, the possibilities, thanks to the platoon, are really uh, limitless. So. Right. No, um, definitely. I'm, I guess my one thought, is, you know, would be, what if you took you dropped him in a unit with like the Endac tank hunter grenadiers instead, and possibly even threw them in the transport or got the, you know, uh, the bigger one that has 12 spaces mm -hmm. and double up on the guys in there. Can he give the reload order to the guys in the transport? So I have to read again the FAQ because it's one of the things I think that an officer in a vehicle can do that, right? Right, but can he reload a unit in the vehicle is more the question I was asking. So the the special actions can be used from inside the ground vehicle, but not on the vehicle itself. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So so he could have them reload. So yes. if you took the twelve, um, is it half the unit can shoot out, or is it half the capacity can shoot out? It's half the capacity on so, each. So yeah, if you took him and uh, you know threw him in the one that has twelve spaces with that uh, yep. uh, that tank hunter grenadier squad, I mean you know you've got you've got a lot of evil right there too. Yeah, you have six six pens of house shooting. <laughs> Granted, he you know it's shooting, reload them, shoot maybe, um, you know it because you do have to look at you know you you aren't going to be able to reactivate them if they're with you. True. But you don't put them with you. Um, well, right. I mean, you you have that potential, but you know, I was I was just thinking, you know, no, no, you put them in the same vehicle, but you don't put them with you. Right. Uh, that's true because there's twelve spaces, so you don't have to have the two units together. Uh huh. Um. Now, is the 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 twelve capacity transport uh, the mm -hmm. Does that one have? Is that one a command vehicle as well, or no? No, no, no it's not. It's okay. The it's, so, the it's just a plain assault vehicle, right? Filled with poetry and hatred. 
So, <laughs> with a, a magnificent howitzer and three machine guns. So, right. Okay. So you'd want the command squad with them then, because you do want to, you know, be able to reload. Yes. Because because any of those units, any of the armor one units, he does have to be within range yeah. one to give orders to, anyways. Uh, range two, but yeah. Range two. Hmm. Yeah. That wouldn't so, be that wouldn't be that much, and that would make him really. Uh, that would put him in danger. So no, the command squad is not an option. If you play the desert fox, you play the command squad. You, play, you know that Desert Fox is 20 points because you have a common squad. So you have no choice. It's really, it's so good to put him in a common squad that really th three of his abilities depend on the common squad. So uh, Right, one. yeah. So, you know, correct. So you would want the command squad with him. Yes. Um, well, do three of his abilities? I mean, I guess, yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, because yeah. Desert Fox, general, and officer, so... It, it really relies heavily on the fact that he's going to manage to roll his uh, official special actions. So you really want to guarantee that all the time. Right. That's the reason why I even put him in a common vehicle, because even on six dice, you may have an accident that, that tells you, oops, you missed. And that's always <laughs> going to be, to be able to reroll. So. <laughs> We've all seen that in our life as gamers. Oh, so. <laughs> oh very true. But, you know, I mean, it, it really just comes down to a you know a, a evaluation of is it worth thirty percent of uh, your uh, of your again, force? Yes, because the rest of the army, when you look at the platoon, for example, the two tank hunter grenadier squad are going to be five points each. So you have two units for ten points. Even if you have 70 points left, you could put seven units. <laughs> Sorry, 14 units. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's the main asset of the Endac. They are dirt cheap. All right. The time. But then you do have to also consider taking in the heavy grenadiers as well. Oh, yeah, of course. But you, you're going to take the heavy grenadier engineer squad, for example, and you're just going to use them as a defensive option. Or you're going to put them in your vehicle and burn stuff from the side of the vehicle. And right. That's it really, it's okay. You're going to sacrifice ten more points, but it's it's really, I mean, it's irrelevant. On an Endak army, your problem will never be the army points. Your problem will be, did I cover enough of all the threats that are going to be in front of me? So well, and and that's where you know it is, you know, kind of where. Or at least my thought goes, because you're going to want to bring some vehicles at least. And yeah. vehicles are, and, and I know that, you know, overall vehicles for the Axis are kind of cheap and strong. Mm -hmm. But you know yeah, it, they're not really strong, but they are really they are not they're not really expensive and they're really they have a lot of firepower. Well that's what I meant in and they're yeah. strong, not they're not exceptionally tough. Yeah. No, but they, they pack a punch, definitely. So, for example, uh, a good complement for that is the Loki Trop, uh, the Loki mm -hmm. Tropical, because advanced reactive fire on an anti-aircraft uh, chassis, it's always good. Uh, it's, a, it's 5 HPs, armor 3, and it costs 11 points. Again, mm -hmm. super cheap. So, really, um, you, can, you can play, a, if you want some lasers, you can play a Herman, uh, Herman Trop that is also really really good and really cheap you have really a ton of options uh, in the NDAC even in the NDAC vehicles to stay inside the faction but even if you want to expand outside the faction you can really choose a lot of a lot of stuff for very low points and then because you want to multiply on the NDAC Grenadier uh, so that they can take advantage of the of the platoon because remember that the third action is only targeting uh, units, infantry units, from the Endak or the Wehrmacht Heavy Grenadier. Uh, that means that you really want to to put a lot of infantry on your list, which it allows you to do because they are again super cheap. So, <laughs> all right. So I think we've uh, beat that one. Uh, oh yeah, up pretty well. Yep. Um, so, so moving on. The second one, the Panzer Grenadier Platoon. Uh, this one is one of my favorites, not because it's the most powerful, 
but because it's probably, as I told you, it you have some <laughs> platoons that are meant for fluff and some for crunch. And this one is a fluffy one, and it's hilarious. Um, it's for those who play games like Warhammer 40k. Uh, this is the orc tactics. You will put a ton of people inside a vehicle and move forward and try to punch stuff with the vehicle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that is because the the platoon advantage for this, it's called mounted assault, and it's when uh, something really big, long word that has panzer in it, uh, so either a stumel or a stum, sturm luther, mm-hmm. are, uh, that's in or supporting the endec uh, panzer grenadier platoon, uh, makes a close combat attack. So whenever one of those vehicles makes a close combat attack, it gains one extra attack with a standard weapon for each soldier from an Endak Grenadier unit or Vermont Heavy Grenadier unit it is carrying as a passenger. So, so really easy. You need a so the to compose the platoon, five units are required. Uh, three of them being vehicles. Uh, two of them being super cheap units. Uh, so again, no hesitation here. Uh, you want to take uh, the Prince Luther with the Desert Fox in it uh, because it re- it again it reiterates exactly what we said about uh, what you could do with the Desert Fox on the previous platoon. And then uh, for the combat units, you will have always the choice between the Stummel and the Sturm Luther. And inside, you can put a tank hunter or a battle a squad. Uh, again, put the tank hunter. Okay, no need for the battle squad. Because, <laughs> because the Stummel and the Sturm Luther have one weakness, is that they are not really strong against super heavy vehicle. And because you're going to throw them at the face of your opponent all the time, you need to have this short-range firepower that the tank hunter is going to provide you uh, to shoot down some heavy vehicle, and then punch them to death thanks to your <laughs> crazed uh, grenadiers <laughs> embarked in their fantastic vehicle. So it's really, a, it's really, really a fun platoon. You really load your vehicles to the brim. Uh, let's remember that the Stummel can carry 12 people, for example. Uh, mm-hmm. And you go straight ahead as fast as possible. Your damage output with the melee weapons is going to be insane for each vehicle. Yeah, because if you load up the that one with uh, with twelve guys, that means you're rolling thirteen close combat attacks. Yes, and it's in addition to your range attacks that you just did. So, right, and actually, uh, you know, that does even include the guys inside shooting out. Yes. So half of half of them on each side, so that you can really put a a lot of hurt on a lot of things. And because the vehicles are also two squares, if you place them properly when you charge, I would say, even though it's not a charge, but when you go in close combat, you can even contact several units and spread your attacks between these units. (laughs) So so really, you can can really do a lot of fun stuff. Uh, You can, uh, I mean, it's, it's beautiful to see on the table because all these walkers that are really... They they really have a fun face. I like them. The all these walkers. They're not the most beautiful of the range, but they are the probably the the funniest to look at. And the fact that you can put a lot of them on the table like that makes them really really fun to play and fun to play against. So <laughs> they're fragile. So you're gonna lose probably a lot of them, but they become wrecks and they protect your units, so your units can stay comfortably in them and just shoot from the, from the wrecks or get closer. I mean, there's really no limit to what you can do thanks to that. Uh, they are quite fast because they are maximum, <clears throat> sorry, their maximum speed is going to be five. <clears throat> sorry. So yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting moment during the game. So Right. And I mean, if you were, you know, especially crafty, you may, uh, you know, make it make a march move to get up beside, you know, all those other units, like you said, uh, you know, hope maybe they don't, you know, die or those units don't run away. You know, uh, you, you time it right. And then you activate Rommel and Rommel gives them the order to get moving. You bunch of monkeys and they start kicking the crap out of people. around. <laughs> it's exactly that. 
which I, I would say that, you know, in all, all the, uh, you know, shenanigans in, uh, in dust with, uh, some close combat stuff, the improvised attacks are the one that annoy me the most. <laughs> These guys have guns that are the cheapest made guns, you know, and I'm thinking SSU right now, uh-huh. but somehow they can still hit and do a point of damage to something that's, you know, vehicle armor seven. Mm-hmm. Yep. I hate improvised attacks. <laughs> yeah. The Especially when that... improvised attacks can be better than somebody who's like, you know, close combat, you know, we're like really good at close combat, yet they still can't hurt certain things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> the improvised melee... Uh, so, you, there are two things. First, the close combat attack has to be uh, thought about not as just punching stuff until it falls down, but it's all the sneaky stuff that you can do think like uh, having uh, a grenade, you know, shoved under a tank, for example, for those who have seen uh, Saving Private Ryan, you know, mm-hmm. uh, having a guy just running under the tank and gluing something to the what tank. What would you like to know about? Uh, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Siri. What would you like to know about blowing up tanks? <laughs> well, Siri, I would like to know whatever you can tell me. She's a little bit scary helpful on that, wasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> The NSA are listening to what you were saying right now. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you can really, you have to think about the close combat attacks, not just as melee weapons and punching stuff, but it's also the, the little guy going uh, between the legs of the, of the worker and, try, and starting to unplug, you know, the, the brakes and, the, and all the pistons and this kind of thing. So it's putting a wrench in the right place or... It's really a lot of things, a lot of situations that are that belong to the close combat more than just the perfect combat. You know, it's not kung fu against a against a war girl. It's not. It's it's not that. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the this platoon uh, typically, and I think they describe it actually in the in the platoon. But yeah, they describe the fact that the guys are gonna uh, throw stuff from the sides of the vehicle. You know, to punch. Uh, and throwing grenades, shooting over the sides, and this kind of thing. So close combat is really close combat. What? Fluff is actually useful somewhere? No. No, fluff is never useful. Fluff is not meant to be useful. Fluff is meant to be fluffy. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um... So yeah, pretty straightforward platoon. Uh, yeah. Don't expect to do miracles with it. Uh, you won't. But it's really fun. And also, because it's not that expensive, it's a platoon that you can play with something else. Uh, you will definitely need to have some support with it. Uh, the best thing to do... My idea is that you spam uh, the the workers filled with tank hunters in, in them. And then you just put some planes to take care of the entire craft uh, capability, because even though the the Sturm Luther and the and the Prince Luther have some entire craft that are actually pretty good, uh, let's remember that you're going to lose two or three of them per round, and you shouldn't be surprised by that. So, yeah, it's really it's really straightforward, really fluffy, uh, really fun to play, really beautiful on the table. Uh, it's a, it's a good platoon just for that. Uh, if you do some nice results with them, it's it's a, it's even a win. So, perfect. And then we have another uh another shenanigans full uh platoon right here. The Congo um, Christophe. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um so composition of the platoon, the starter set for the end deck. Christoph, the Hermann Trop, and the Security Grenadier Squad. The um, Platoon Advantage is really simple. Uh, everyone, uh, all the NDAC units gain the Scout skill. That's done. <laughs> and then you have, as yeah. long as Christoph is in play, all NDAC units from this platoon gain the Trailblazer skill. um, Christoph is really the master of shenanigans on the table and having the whole army being able to do it uh, makes it really really fun and can be really frustrating for the opponent 
So trailblazer means that you're going to be able to go across, to, to go through enemy units when you move. So you don't have to go around them. There's no more, oops, I'm blocking you, and you have to double the amount of boxes that you have to move to be able to go to shoot behind me or this kind of things. So you just go through them. It doesn't matter. Uh, and the scout skill, obviously, uh, your first when you enter the table at the first round, your move can be a march move. And it yep. counts as one action allowing you to have another action behind it. So that's really good, like really, really good. Um, so that means that your army is going to be in your opponent's face super fast. That means that your short-range weapons are not that short-ranged anymore. Uh, that means that you can really get on an objective super fast. Uh, you can really do a lot of things. Um, we have a common friend, Raymond, that has an NDAC list that is super nasty uh, with 12 or 13 activations with a T9 Ion in it. And having T9 Ion becoming scouts because they are NDAC uh, thanks to Christoph and his platoon. And having this Aina uh, jumping at you and grappling you almost at the first round uh, can really pose some serious problems to your strategy. I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but I do hate that hyena. <laughs> yeah, Tina and hyena is a, are a fantastic unit, like really. And they really shine when they have this bonus of movement uh, for them. So that's a, but that's one example. I mean, having the security grenadier squad, for example, that has hands of Faust and flamethrowers in the unit and being able to deliver them round one is also really, really scary. Um, so it's really a platoon where you cannot make bad choices. You play what you want, it's going to work, and it's going to be efficient. And it's really a very good platoon. So, so don't uh, hesitate. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it. it's... I mean, it's one of the intro of sorts uh, platoons, and it gives some amazing, amazing benefits. Oh yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It's for the starter sets. It's probably the best platoon right now. Probably. No. Yeah. I, I would. I would definitely have to agree. Yeah. So, especially yeah. as I'm just looking at Christoph right now, and he's just kind of nutty, nutty just in who he is, anyways. Oh yeah, flamethrower. <laughs> Expert Panzerfaust 100 expert expert and and unlimited ammo on the Panzerfaust because all heroes have unlimited ammo on their on their on their limited ammo weapons. Yeah, except Guaylo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Guaylo doesn't need unlimited. No, Guaylo doesn't need unlimited ammo. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's Panzerfaust 100 plus flamethrower. You plus trailblazer again, meaning that you can really move where you want. That's that's a a really good hero. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so that uh that'll actually wrap it up for the end deck. I yes, for, yes. I for some reason kept thinking that there was more units in there for them. No, 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 no. just <coughs> but, three platoons, but none of them is bad. So that makes that they count double. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that'll actually push us into the Operation Condor book. Um, yes. which is the expansion which covers all of the new and fun shenanigans that are the Luftwaffe. Uh, the Luftwaffe. The Air Force of the, the Axis. Um, so an Air Force that is actually divided. It's, it's really funny the way um, Olivier and Paolo built the faction because it's a faction that has two sub-factions. And they didn't build it so that they, you have to play them separately. But it's really tempting due to the platoons. So the first sub-faction is going to be the Fallschirmjäger. Uh, so basically the paratroopers of the of the Luftwaffe. And then the other sub-faction are going to be the Rakuten Trooper, uh, which are the rocketeers of the, of the faction. Yep. So when it comes to the platoons, you will have, if I remember properly, you have... So... 
Um, oh, how many platoons there are? Let's five, see. Five of them. Yeah. Five of them. Yeah, because you have uh, three racket and trooper and two two fashion Um. No. One, two, no, three, um, four racket and trooper and and one fashion mega. Okay. So you know they they really favor the guys with rocket packs. Imagine that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is funny because most of our players right now are favoring the Falchion Jäger to the Rocket and Trooper. So it's pretty funny to see. <laughs> so for the Falchion Jäger platoon, uh, three, four, four units are going to be required. The first one being Kurt mm -hmm. or uh, Command Squad. And then, as combat units, you will have the tank hunter, the battle, or the anti aircraft, which are the three units that exist for the for the first year. Uh, three of the units, I should say, because now we have all the support weapons also. So, um, the the platoon advantage is actually pretty awesome uh, because it says that a Luftwaffe Falschirmjäger uh, that jump. Uh, uh, through uh, through airborne skill, okay, uh, will actually can be in range one instead of range two of an objective when they are placed on the battlefield. And so this is infantry units and the uh, Falstrom RSO vehicles. RSO vehicles, yes. Yeah. Um, so that means that you know your your little your light cannons, the laser battery ones uh, yeah you, uh, you you will have the laser cannon the flak 3 and the pack 40 yeah yeah those those uh oh, yeah. those boys get to enjoy this as well yes so it's really 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 good because the main the main well the built-in i should say uh flaw of the airborne capability is that you cannot drop on an objective or close to it you have to be in range two Range 2 doesn't seem that bad when you think about it, but that means that you cannot have a last-minute drop to take an objective, you know, if you want to attack. That means that you cannot have a last-minute I drop and I contest an objective or this kind of things. If the objective says, you know, you have to be in range 1 to contest, you cannot do it. So it's really... it's That means that you're going to have to sacrifice one action to be able to move. So... It's really something that can become really problematic with the Falschirmjäger. Thanks to this platoon, they can land super close to an objective, meaning that they can contest, meaning that it's also easier, for example, if an objective is in a building, uh, to drop close to the building you know, and enter the building. So that creates a, a ton of possibilities that you didn't have before. Um, it also has to be um, thought about uh, taking into consideration the heroes of the Falschirmjäger, and as I told you, the support units. Uh, typically, the heroes, the as a common unit, Kurt is uh, mentioned, but Kurt is really not is a hero that you're going to take when you have a few points left, and you really want this one man army that is cap capable of destroying a whole infantry unit in one round, <laughs> because he does that really well. But it's not the, the obvious choice when you play Falschirmjäger. The two obvious choices are the other two heroes of the box, Rolf and Galeato. Ga uh, Rolf, because 12 points of pure awesomeness. The thing, the, the guy shoots at everything perfectly, shoots all the time, shoots a ton, and can have a third action. And when you are deprived of your action because you're airborne, that's really convenient to be able to still retain an extra action uh, because you will need to sustain an attack or these kind of things. So you drop in range one with Rolf, you roll for your third action, you get it, and suddenly your unit is operational right away. You can even consider moving and shooting. So that's pretty cool. So, and I, I can't, I can't think uh, through all the scenarios right now, mm -hmm. but most any scenarios where it has you know, roughly the defender around, you know, with an objective, yeah. you can't start within more than, or you have to start at least two away from mm -hmm. the objective. Yes. So, you know, 
in one of the things that you know i mean you were pointing out that you know it's one of the weaknesses of the the airborne skill is that it pushes you you know the to the two away which you know i I don't know. I, I see that. Um, I almost see that as a balancing, you know, point of view, you know, as a, you know, it's mm-hmm. actually, it does make sense to, you know, because nobody is supposed to, and that is what the power behind this is, is that it lets you not last minute, but, um, and I, I can, I can think of the, uh, you have that solid wall uh, halfway through the board and it's height three or four, yes. um, you know, it's the cliff. Uh, yes. scenario mm-hmm. so you have that and the the defenders are over there around the that objective but they you know and then all of a sudden you start dropping your paratroopers mm-hmm. which basically is i think the win condition of the game is just once i i think it's if the you know attacker gets within one and is there at the end of the round they win exactly <laughs> so you know that one, yeah, I. Oof. It's really a fast attack uh, platoon uh, that is really main, meant for that. It's really fun. Uh, you have a lot of scenarios that we published also uh, for the Endless War campaign, for example, on our newsletter that also have this kind of condition where you have to be in range one of something, you know, to be able to activate it, capture it, all these kind of things. You have entire scenarios where you need to cross the table to get to an objective and. Naturally, the, the Luftwaffe ignores these kind of things because they drop everywhere. But oh, yeah, being yeah. able to drop even closer puts a lot more pressure on the defense uh, that your opponent uh, has set up before you arrived. So it's really interesting. I mean, being able to drop, for example, uh, stupid example, but we were mentioning a little earlier the fact that some armies could really arrive right away on the objective round one you can really consider for with Galeazzo and an anti-tank unit dropping right next to the tank that just took the objective round one, you know, and just drop on them because you're in range one of the objective and destroy the tank thanks to Galeazzo and his unit. Right. Galeazzo oh, yeah. has quick recovery, meaning that you do not sacrifice your first activation when you drop. So you have your two actions. So that can be really nasty really fast. Yeah. <sighs> yes. No, it's it's a really, really good platoon. Uh, it's it's really easy to set up because, again, you can play any unit from the Fallschirmjäger and you need to have a common squad or court. So if you don't want to sacrifice points, you, you take court. If you want to, to have some reactivations and reload possibilities, because you have a lot of Panzerfaust in this uh, faction, then you go with the common squad, uh, you get comfortable with it, and you destroy whatever you need with it. So, and very... I guess that is, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, tell me, cut tell you me. off right there, but you know that is one of the things to keep in mind when you are playing the Luftwaffe. You you have a lot of those, like you were saying, um, either. Uh, rocket launchers or Panzerfaust and stuff like that. They're very, you know, especially with the airborne, the Fallschirmjäger units, you're very turn one trying to alpha strike. Yes. You know, and, and just be devastating, which, I mean, we were discussing it about other units earlier, you know, where, um, you know, doing something like that, you know, can be just entirely devastating to an opponent. Um, because it, it can be hard, especially if you're moving onto the board to, to counter that, especially if you do have, if you combine it with some of the racket troop and, and you're bringing on the racket troop and, and just waiting and waiting. And finally they bring on that big Walker that you've been waiting for. And all yeah. of a sudden you drop Galeazzo mm-hmm. or, or Rolf. Rolf. Yeah. Rolf, the evil bastard with unlimited ammo. Yep. <laughs> and expert. And expert. Now, really, uh, the Fallschirmjäger is a, are a very good, very good choice. And with this platoon, that makes them really easier to play. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, yeah. Uh, 
there is reason why I like them. Yeah, tiny detail also, but some some scenarios, for example, have multiple objectives, and sometimes because they are really spread out on the table, it's going to be difficult for the Falchimiger to not land in range one of an objective. But suddenly with this platoon, they can do it. And that makes the ability to deploy uh, so much easier for the player that it's it's still worth mentioning just for that. So Right. And, uh, you know, honestly, if you're playing a Falchimiger heavy, uh, you know, list anyways, it it doesn't make sense not to take this platoon. I mean, oh, it, yeah. it uh. should be an auto take because really the only you have to do this is taking either a command squad or Kirk. Yes. Or Kirk. And it's really, and, and there's choices, again, really easy to make uh, once you have figured out the rest of your army. You, right. You know that the points that you have left are either because you want to reactivate or because you want to shoot stuff even more. So, so really an easy platoon. Um, I would say a must have. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those ones, especially since, you know, like we were, we, once we mentioned, um, it's actually currently the only Falschermjäger uh, uh, platoon out there. Yes. So, you know, if you're, if you're playing at least four units of Falschermjäger. Yeah. Think about it. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> then why, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then we, uh, then we go ahead and, uh, move on to the, uh, racket troop and, uh, platoon. Yeah. So the racket and trooper platoon. Um, so this one is, I will call it the vanilla racket and trooper platoon because <laughs> it's really, uh, the most generic one. Uh, three, again, four choices. So same model, uh, one common unit that's going to be either Bastion Kant's, uh, also called, also uh, called racket and man. Uh, or a common squad, and then three combat units between the tank hunter battle and anti aircraft squads. The, it, it, he really shouldn't have any other name. He just should be Racketed Men. Agreed. He shouldn't even have a. Yeah, he should have lost his his name. But so the platoon advantage lightning lightning strike says that all racket and trooper units with the flying skill in or supporting this platoon pass the infantry save on a score of shield as well as uh, faction logo during the first turn of the game. Oh, why? The racket and trooper... Uh, why does are... Paolo hate me? <laughs> they are known for two things. They are super fast and they are super fragile because they are all armor one and they will fly out of the table as soon as they flew in. So, the... I, uh... I'll, I'll be honest, set on heavy rangers. <laughs> yeah, but they are actually uh, a little less resilient than heavy rangers. So I, now, thanks to this platoon, <laughs> you will have the ability to hope a little bit longer. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Hmm. yeah. So, All right. So uh, several things. That makes them like they are in cover all the time, except it's not a cover save. It remains an, an infantry save, meaning that it's going to be vulnerable to the same kind of weapons that cancel infantry saves. And that is that is an important distinction because I know I catch myself every now and again going, yes. you know, even though I'm not actually trying to interpret it as it, I'm you know saying you know I'm saving like I have a cover save, yes, and saying it like that. Then when something happens, you go, yeah, I still have the save, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, wait a second. No, you have it... your need. I don't have my save. <laughs> right. You know, I, I do have this one or I don't have this one. And Yes. And yeah, um, unfortunately, it's sometimes it can, you can confuse yourself. Oh, yeah. Uh, really quick. So, again, very simple platoon. Uh, very straightforward honestly uh, quite unpopular because the platoon the, uh, the platoon advantage is really really uh, it's really anecdotal you will have it from time to time uh, if your opponent sh uh, I mean targets you on the first round but then on second third round where actually the Luftwaffe becomes weak because they start to have losses 
and they need to to prevent these losses, the platoon doesn't help in any way. So it's a good comfort for, I would say, if, if you do not hope to have an alpha strike and you just hope to weather a little bit the, the first assault of your opponent on the first round, but it's not something that you will rely on uh, very efficiently. Uh, and it's not something that that you have to, I would say, fight to make sure that you have in your in your army list. Compared to the Falchermiger platoon, for example, which is based on the same really generic model of army lists, uh, the Falchermiger really shines really fast. This one is going to give you some nice surprises from time to time, but it's not something that you're going to, I mean, it's not a must have in any way. It's more for the fluff of it. Hmm. So it's really a platoon that I have a hard time playing myself. Um, oh, oh, I see. I see. That's why you don't like it. You haven't figured out how to play it. Gotcha. I, uh, do, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 no, it's true. It's true. I totally admit that. Um, it's really a platoon that I have a hard time uh, playing. Yes, because it's not... Uh, it's really just for the infantry. It's only just for the racket and trooper infantry. Uh, it doesn't protect the vehicles. It doesn't protect anything. And depending on the table on which you play, uh, on the first round, if you place your sceneries, for example, like some Thursdays days or tournaments allow you to, uh, you won't need this better infantry save unless you play a spam of infantry, which is also a possibility, to be honest. Uh, we can talk about it later, but you could choose to play a ton of units, you know, and no vehicles. But to me, it's not the spirit of dust. And so it's a, it's really a platoon that is really so specialized and so specific that really I have a, I, I, yeah, I confess I have a hard time uh, figuring, it, figuring it out, definitely. Hmm. Uh, Though, and the one thing that I um, will always have to laugh at is Racket and Man, and actually one of the other flying heroes also has it, the camouflage. <laughs> yes. I'm a little cloud. Don't look at me <laughs> as I fly across the sky. Don't listen to the jet on my back or anything like that. Nope, I'm camouflaged. It's the Winnie the Pooh technique. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little black rain cloud. Right? <laughs> <laughs> tut tut, it looks like rain. <laughs> and now, now I just need to paint Racket and Man like Winnie the Pooh. As Winnie the Pooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, filled with fluff, but not my laser, my triple laser cannon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, by himself, Rectan Man is really fun to play, but... Right. Uh, but, yes, I, I just was looking at him and saw the camouflage, and um, is it Kaori that also has it? Yes. Okay. Who is actually the next one on the on this list. Yes, and this one, even though it's a short platoon, is one of my favorite in the game, and it can really uh, create a lot of fun fun interactions, so... So, and actually, um, I, I noticed this earlier, and I, I forgot to ask as we started flipping through. I really noticed it with her list, and I was just looking back at the others. Mm -hmm. um, so it says something about support units at the bottom, but unlike the uh, the main rule book, it doesn't have the little flow chart that keeps going down and saying support units and plus Yeah, because, size. because it's pointless. Because the... That's what we discovered with the with the rule book. Uh, seeing people interact with the book and asking us rules questions, the the either they felt because they, it was in a chart that they had to have support units, or they understood naturally that everything else would be a support unit in the platoon. So we decided to remove them from the from the TONE uh, in the in the Condor book. Uh, because first uh, it freed some plate, some some space. Uh, that was that one thing, that one detail that we didn't have to put in the layout, and it was really completely useless in the first book. So, hmm. 
Interesting. Mm-hmm. I would have figured optional would have told you that it was not required. Uh, yeah, but we we discovered daily that even if it's written bl- black and white, sometimes it can be interpreted differently. There are so many shades of gray in the in the minds of of our players sometimes. I mean, I understand. There's been plenty of stuff that I have questioned, but you know yeah. that one that one did seem self explanatory. Mm-hmm. But that <laughs> is uh, neither here nor there. I just wanted to clarify yeah. since that was something different. Mm-hmm. So now that I lost my page. So the Shadow Platoon with Kaori. So Kaori Yamashida as a command unit and one combat unit that can be any of the Rocket and Trooper, entire craft, battle squad, or tank hunter squad. The simplest platoon ever, only two units, and they have to be deployed together. So it's going to be Kaori and the unit she joins. And both are going to uh, be able to use the camouflage skill. So you're going to have six uh, rocketeers flying through the table, being camouflaged. (laughs) That is, we're now all just little bees. Exactly. (laughs) With Rocket and Man as Winnie the Pooh in the front. (laughs) Yes. So really, uh, really, really useful platoon. Uh, it's an assassination platoon. Uh, it's really the unit when you play Racket and Trooper. It's what I told you with Galeazzo, where you want to drop, you know, super close to a very dangerous unit and wreck it right away. That's what you're going to do with the Kaori and the, and the unit. Um, mm-hmm. So a lot of <laughs> players actually have been ranting with reason on the fact that we didn't release the Racket and Trooper Tank Hunter Squad. Uh, which is going to be repaired for Gen Con. We're going to have it at Gen Con, so they're going to be happy with that. Uh, but this is the definitely the, my first choice uh, playing with this with Kaori in this platoon would be the Tank Hunter Squad uh, because it's a squad that can really destroy a lot of things. And being camouflaged means that you really are going to deliver the unit wherever you want, and that's convenient. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, depending on the scenario that you're playing or the, the opponent that you're facing, or if you decided to have something a little bit more fluffy, uh, the entire craft squad will be also a nice alternative uh, because it's always convenient to be able to uh, get camouflage and then shoot at aircraft that, are, that forgot you a little bit and came a little too close. Or if you want to destroy some infantry units uh, that have scout, for example, or, so, or some light vehicles. Right. So yeah, it's um, it's really re- uh, this one is, I mean, mo- more straightforward than that you cannot do. It's really really simple to build. It's really obvious what you're going to do with. So really enjoy it as it is, because it's a really easy platoon to play. Um, really comfortable and it really the the Luftwaffe the Rocket and Trooper really take advantage of this platoon so yeah, I wouldn't hesitate even if you play another platoon next to it I would always have Kaori with a unit like that uh, also something completely insane but you, we mentioned during the Blood uh coverage that the Blood Crits had some difficulties with the anti-aircraft capabilities. Uh, typically, I like to mix my Blood Crits with some Luftwaffe. And oh, yeah. And having Kaori with the anti-aircraft squad can be really convenient uh, if you want to have some anti-aircraft possibilities. Mm, sneaky, sneaky. Mm-hmm. And kind of cheap. And then you can still do something else when you need to take care of infantry that your gorillas have a hard time taking down. So... Yeah, very simple platoon, very enjoyable. Plus, Kaori is a magnificent miniature, so that helps a lot. (laughs) Um, Yes. 
All right. Though, I don't know, is, is there somewhere else where it says that she has to go with that single unit in her platoon, which it would yes. make no sense not to? Well, actually, um, she has to. Uh, the Shadow Strike Platoon Advantage mentions that it's only the racket and, one racket and trooper unit in this platoon that has been joined by Kaori. Right. So. But, you know, like I said, it doesn't make sense not to, unless for some reason you took somebody else's support and decided, you know, something, yeah. something absolutely silly, but, you know, it, it was yeah. more a matter of wording. Yeah, no, no, definitely uh, you put Kaori in the unit, you play them as a unit of six, and... Uh, right. Everyone is is happy, but you open it. <laughs> <laughs> because your happy little clouds are floating across the sky. Yes. <laughs> camouflaged. <laughs> Shenanigans, people. Shenanigans. Oh, yeah. The just, just like this next uh, unit right here, the Racket of Droopin uh, Assault Platoon. Ah, uh, Goliath. Mm -hmm. so, common unit, Goliath. And that's all. <laughs> Com combat, <laughs> unit, combat unit, any of the three Racket and Trooper units, again, anti aircraft, battle or tank, tank hunter. The Platoon Advantage. Uh, the all the racket and trooper infantry unit units in or supporting this platoon will gain brave. So brave means that you roll three dice when you want to remove under fire or suppressed. So very useful platoon uh, because again suppression is a mechanism that really can render a significant part of your army completely useless. So having this platoon is really convenient for the racket and trooper because you really don't want them to stay uh, immobile or not be able to shoot. Plus, it makes you play Goliath. And Goliath <laughs> is like the awesomeness of the gorillas uh, pushed to 11. So it's a gorilla, armor 3, uh, that punches everything, including planes. There's absolutely nothing nothing that is bad about Goliath. So uh, having him as a leader of a platoon is always hilarious. Um, it's justified by the fact that people that are used to fight uh, uh, alongside him are actually admiring the fact that he's completely crazy and they are not scared anymore because basically when you can fly next to a gigantic gorilla, you are not afraid of anything anymore ever. So that's the reason why. Uh, but yeah, it's good platoon, uh, really straightforward. Uh, it's really a platoon of, I want to make sure that this game mechanism is not going to hinder my, my ability to do whatever I want with my very fast units that pack a ton of punch. So really, uh, there's no bad choice here. Um, it's going to be a good platoon to fight against stuff that, makes you uh, suppressed automatically, for example, like snipers uh, or flames, all these kind of things. So it's really, really uh, very useful uh, for any racket and trooper player. So there's really no specific trick to this platoon. Um, strangely enough, I would say that you don't want to spam too many units, uh, too many infantry units. You want to keep it close to what the platoon is right now. Uh, because you don't need to multiply the, the the units for that. You want to have some vehicles to support these units, and you want to have the platoon of cavalry next to it for the for for the right. Not just the pleasure of this of that platoon. That is just insane. So yeah. Well, and you know, I mean, one of the big things is is that you would want you would want this platoon in. Um, you would really, I mean, you know, especially with Goliath, because. Like you said, the power of the gorillas. Yeah. Um, he's punching a vehicle twice, uh, doing damage four. Mm -hmm. So you're you're most likely going to want him to you know take two tank hunter squads. Yes. They're going to roll right up there with him. Yep. To bash on a you know the enemy's tanks. Um, so I don't even know. I mean, you know. With the brave and all that, yeah, you know they can they can absorb the shots and hopefully you know shake it off uh, easier. Yeah, 
Um, you know, so I, I could see why you would suggest Kaori as a a good other um, platoon to take. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I don't know. Part of me would say that you know another another good one. And I, uh, honestly, you could probably just take all three of them. But you know, another good one to take is uh, just the just the plain old racket and troop and uh, platoon. Um, you know, because that that would be where the bulk of your forces are, and uh-huh. you know that one I would you know probably focus a little bit more on the battle squads and you know trying to get at the infantry. Yep. And you know, just in the chaos, be charging forward with all the other stuff. True. Um. But uh, yeah, shenanigans, armor three, gorilla, punches stuff really well. Yeah, has damage resilience. I'll just you know leave that there and flip the page now. <laughs> My feelings aren't hurt at all. <laughs> so now the last platoon, the Luftwaffe Kampfgruppe Florentine platoon. So, Florentine is my favorite miniature in the whole freaking game because she's magnificent. Now, <laughs> her, her platoon is the, has been the source of my biggest disappointment ever in this game due to a decision made by Olivier. Uh, <laughs> that, that is in the FAQ. So, the platoon, uh, simple the content of the star set. So, the Falchion RSO Pack 40 the Rocket and Trooper Battle Squad, and Florentine. Uh, the platoon advantage that I will not mention because my German is as atrocious as my tactics um, says that all Luftwaffe units in or supporting a Kampfgruppe Florentine Rocket and Trooper platoon that possess limited ammo weapons gain the ability to perform self-targeted ammo drop special action. So it functions as the normal officer special action but it you don't need an officer and it's only the unit can only do it on itself mm, that was what i explained um when we covered the luftwaffe yeah i was saying that you could use that on the planes including the absolutely fantastic exe to reload the the gliding bomb. Sadly, since then, an FAQ has been published <laughs> that only the ground units can benefit from this platoon advantage. After crying for three days in a row, I decided to stop mourning the loss of this magnificent tactics that I had. And now you just decide to play uh, indeed again a lot of infantry, a lot of ground units. Uh, that have a lot of uh, pens of Faust so that they can reload. Uh, funny detail, uh, this is a platoon that not only works on Rocket and Trooper, but also on uh, the Fallschirmjäger. So Florentine is really an officer that is going to be able to really have a mixed army and all these people are going to be able to reload as a first action and then shoot their Panzer Faust again if they want to. Uh, yeah. Funny enough, we're talking, we were talking about Rolf that has the possibility of a third action. So that means that with this platoon, Rolf could decide to roll for the third, third action. And if he has it, have his unit have a self reload because you have more Panzer Faust in the unit than him. And then shoot again some Panzerfaust, but this time they would be sustained. Yep. So, Dirty. Yeah, pretty pretty fun uh, platoon. Uh, always useful with this army because, again, the, the Luftwaffe has a very strong alpha strike, but then when you, when you start the grinding, this army is not meant for that. And you're going to suffer mid-game because you're going to start losing a lot of uh, key uh, units because you're going to be deprived of their weapons because, again, limited ammo, or because they're going to die. 
if you can remove the problem of limited ammo, that makes it all the more interesting uh, for you as a Luftwaffe player. And that's the reason why this platoon is retains really uh, a lot of interest despite the the tragic loss of the <laughs> of, of the of the exertion and again, but it's still really really good to play. So it's really it's probably it's not the strongest platoon, but it's really a platoon that is extremely reliable and makes your army extremely reliable again mid game where normally you would be a little bit in trouble. So. Yes. Um, I, it didn't even, I mean, you know, even though I read, uh, you know, all Luftwaffe units, mm -hmm. it really didn't click until you said it a second ago. And then I went, well, son of a bitch. Yep. All Luftwaffe units. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. Um, now, granted, the no, no, no. Actually, I would have. I was even thinking uh, that that would that isn't even no. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, but they don't benefit. No, they do. That was what I was just saying. Yep, everyone, everyone benefits. Show you go, rocket and trooper. If we had a vehicle with a with the limited ammo, it would benefit from it. So yeah, it's really, really nice. No aircraft though. <laughs> no aircraft. Uh, I mean, you know, really, you know, how everything else works, that, that does make sense. Oh, the, I, again, it, it's not a matter of making sense. It's a matter of having something completely crazy, stupid uh, on the table. And uh, at that time when the EXA was able to do it, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah but that's that's part of the point actually i'm I'm looking is uh are any of the uh luftwaffe vehicles limited ammo no none of them oh they so... have reload eventually but they don't have the the limited ammo okay so you know doesn't matter as much for the vehicles no, at the same think... time the reality is, is that, you know, looking through the Luftwaffe, everything is primarily focused on the, the infantry. Yes. Like <laughs> I was about to say, I found a vehicle with a uh, limited ammo, but then I realized it was the Hexa with the gliding bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you just did that to torture me. I know. <laughs> Not really. But... <laughs> <laughs> but there was some irony to it <laughs> as I was it's, about to announce it's it. It's just a side bonus, I see. <laughs> <laughs> now you know some of my pain. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's it's almost kind of refreshing to see that, you know, they have all these things for these, you know, already pretty badass units that you know for the most part just tweak them to make them just that much more badass um i really still will not get past certain flying units having camouflage <laughs> i i don't consider that badass and they will have like when i acquire them they will be covered in white cotton <laughs> with a jet plume coming out the bottom of course <laughs> <laughs> um but no um it's it's just fun and that is some of the things that um are here in the Luftwaffe and that you find with these with these platoons you know flipping yeah. through the uh flipping through the the main book and you know all the other other platoons and stuff like that there's there's some of them that you know really do feel like they you know straight up border or bend that line into you know trying to be in the broken territory 
Yeah, no, the, the, the Luftwaffe has, is, has really been an army that Olivier had the time to think about as a whole. And it really shows in every aspect of the army, not only the different choices of units, mm -hmm. but also the platoons. And even the platoons that I don't really like because by personal affinity, I have none. But uh, <laughs> even those, they are meant for a specific purpose and they have a utility. So it's really, it's really a nice army uh, to play. It's really fluid. Uh, it has a ton of options. And it has this um, high reliance on dice pick, uh, that can, dice pick that can be really, really fun. So it's really... I, I really like this faction, and as I told you, uh, Florentine is my favorite miniature in the game. But it's really, yeah, it's really, really a fun army to play. Uh, naturally, I would, I would have a, a weak spot for racket and troopers because they, they look so badass with their jetpacks that it's, it makes them really an obvious choice for me. But even the Falchion Jäger have some really interesting uh, gameplay options and enhanced by the either their own platoon or by the Florentine platoon. So it's really, really an interesting army to play as a whole. So, yeah. So, and, and you keep, you know, or you mentioned Florentine and, you know, being a magnificent model, mm -hmm. but all, all I can think of in, in armor cast makes them their uh, resin, um, flames you know they're designed for different kinds of uh weapons just to modify to put you know stuff on you know yeah. that. um and all i can think of is is getting a couple of those to put at the you know top of the flamethrowers that uh she's rolling around with and uh, the guns that she has are lasers are, oh yeah that's right they're lasers she, Not, has, she has two pew pews right wait who is it that had the dual flamethrowers? It's not a Luftwaffe person, is it? No, it's a chef. Che chef. I thought somebody else had them, though. Two flamethrowers? No. No? Usually they have one. True, they usually have the bigger one. Yeah. Huh, I thought there was somebody else. But, you know, I was thinking flamethrowers, you know, the flamethrowers shooting out. And, you know, her kind of just, you know, looking and going, I'm majestic as fuck. Yes. <laughs> as she spins in a circle. It would still work. <laughs> no, that, that's true. That's true. She's... And, and I would totally blame Alicia for that uh, inspiration because I could totally see her doing that if she had dual flamethrowers and a jetpack. Oh, yeah. You would twirl and go. The world would burn. <laughs> <laughs> You guys didn't see her look when she said that. She said that so quiet and meekly, but her look was <laughs> everything but quiet. <laughs> it's because I'm the nice one. Yes. <laughs> People really can't know what I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that actually rounds up the whole axis. Lots of shenanigans, but, uh, you know, when you have I don't know, half of the, you know, I mean, you have one whole supplement dedicated to you or nearly dedicated to you, uh, you know, in Operation yeah, that, Condor. That, that helps a lot. <laughs> and then, you know, half the first book, I guess you're going to have a lot of shenanigans and a lot of options. Yep. Yeah. Axis is really a very complete <laughs> army. Uh, and the platoons for the Axis really show that. Uh, it really... Uh, Olivier was telling me a few weeks ago that he thought that they were it was probably the best uh, construction the best army building that you could have with the axis because the platoons were really adding to the gameplay of the of the faction all the time so there was no bad choice basically I, I disagree on two of them but <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's really that. So mm -hmm. very uh, co complete gameplay, uh, reinforced by platoons that are really uh, varied and really efficient. So 
yeah enjoy the axis yeah, yeah. definitely um so if any of you listeners who are experienced or even those of you who are still relatively new to dust have any combinations that you liked uh i mentioned it in the show notes of the last episode but especially using the um dust and list app which you can get from either the app store or google play mm -hmm. um you know if you uh grab that you you build your you know your lists and you want to send it to us you can send it to me uh, nick at skirmish uh and you know we'll we'll look at it possibly talk about it at some point in the future um or just, you know, kind of throw it out there. Not uh, not necessarily critiquing it, but just, you know, what is your favorite list? Or if you throw it in any of the comments for this episode or any of the other episodes when it comes out. Um, you know, just what are your favorite units to, you know, or platoons, and then the units that you use in them? Um, because... Excuse me, because Greg says that there's no way to power a game in Dust. <laughs> I don't know. There's there's plenty of shenanigans out there, and we've talked about some of them. I mean, we talked about them with uh, that first uh, first Endac platoon. Mm -hmm. There there are definitely ways of um, you know if we're not going to call it what it is, <clears throat> power gaming. Uh, but it's uh, <laughs> it is just playing for a competitive advantage <laughs> it is it is you will always have power gamers in any gaming community uh, some people really enjoy that uh, and it's completely legitimate uh, the thing is right now with the shape of the game with the new rules with the the way the units that we're releasing have been uh, thought and built and modified and stuff like that you really have no meta that is really so obvious that you need to play that unit or that faction or that platoon to to win the stats from all the tournaments show that everyone can do it uh the stats from the players that we have on the endless campaign for on the endless war campaign for example really show that everyone plays a little bit of everything so I'm really not, uh, I, I really believe that as the game is built right now, the winners will be the ones that play the best, not the ones that came with the most atrocious combination of shenanigans in their lists. So. Well, and you know, power gaming isn't just being able to build the best list uh, you know you can look at games like um you know x-wing for example yeah. uh, as a quick segue you know there's people who put out the lists that you know like this person flies this and has won every regional and uh you know national or whatever levels of events you know they are the top player and these are the this is the list that they fly you know because it is hands down the most powerful. Yeah. You can give that to a brand new person and they're not going to have a hope in hell. Exactly. Because, you know, there is, there's still that element of skill that you need. Mm -hmm. And there's that element of skill. And, and that's, you know, and, and that's part of what even, you know, a, a power gamer is. It isn't just, you know, they're looking to build the most atrocious list just to squash noobs. It is the challenge of building the best list to squash noobs <laughs> or anyone else who gets in the way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I think one of the one of the best examples for anyone who does something something like that, you know, not even necessarily power gamer, though, I, I would say that they almost claim it themselves as well, uh, is is Owen from Gaming with the Cooler. Mm -hmm. Um you know he he consistently will work and spend the time and you know effort to build the best list for whatever he's playing yeah. or definitely try to build the best list and as soon as he does he's done with the game you know or <laughs> well not necessarily done with the game but you know he's like okay you know i i kind of have figured out how this works let, let me find the next challenge yeah, the bre breaking um, the rules uh, is is part of the sport, and it's something really interesting. Uh, 
I, I that's what I do with board games, and that's the reason why I don't like many board games. <laughs> uh, but you know, so this isn't even breaking the rules. You know, that's no, that's I the should, thing is that you're. I should say, I should say breaking the code. It's more where is the where is the weak point in the in the in the mechanism that the game proposes that will make it that at a point there is no challenge anymore. So and it's and it's a challenge in itself. And it's really something that I, I really understand people who like to do that. It's just that right now right now with the what Dust is, uh which is a casual game uh with a lot of fun rules and stuff like that and obviously ridiculous ridiculously fun uh units. Um I don't think you can find a list where you're going to say, you know what, I win everything all the time and I have absolutely no problem against anyone. I mean, the the end deck list that I was mentioning with the, the Desert Fox and and uh, the Common Squad and the combinations of that, uh, I have actually a local player in Cincinnati uh, called Tristan uh, that works for Game Time Miniature and he's really, really good, like really freaking good. And he's a good player. He's a fun player, and his army is amazing. The 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 army construction is really really interesting. And still, every time we play against each other, we have this game that ends with us sweating like pigs because we had to do everything we could to not get wiped out. Uh, and it ends by basically having one unit on the table. So it's it's really hilarious, but there's nothing that is so so broken that you cannot find a solution against it in the game. And most of the time when people think that something is broken, it's because it's not the army list of their opponent that was hard. It's because their list was not uh, well thought. But it's, <laughs> it's really hard for a player to admit that. And I understand that, but you have to build your list not only to do your shenanigans, but you counter the shenanigans of your opponent. And right. Means that you need to, yes, you need to build to take into consideration that you may fa- that you may face three choppers during your day. Uh, there's also another list that is going to come that is only going to have like damage resilient uh, armor for uh, people. You're going to have another list that is going to be based on a spam or five point units, and the answer is not necessarily the same every time, but you can find in your in any army of the game right now the solution against that. And, so. and quit calling out my recon dog army list. Thank you. <laughs> Just because I run twenty recon dogs doesn't mean anything. It's fantastic. I would, I would I would spend the whole game just barking at my opponent. <laughs> That's all I would do. I I think the best part is when you run a bunch of recon dogs up and they bite Guaylo and <laughs> and actually do damage, <laughs> and the person sitting there going, "Ah, what <laughs> just happened?" <laughs> yeah. Oh, talking about that, that was one of the mistakes that we did uh, during the the podcast talking about the mythos uh, and the uh, and the mercs. I mentioned that you could grapple the the big uh, creatures from the mythos with the dogs, and that's my mistake because the dogs cannot do damage to a vehicle level five, so they cannot do grapple uh, with their improvised melee weapon. So you can improvise melee weapon with the dogs. But they won't have the grapple on it. Oh, really? Yep. So that means that you're gonna grapple infantry like there's no tomorrow. Uh, even some lighter vehicles, but you won't be able to do it on the heavy vehicles. So that was my mistake. I remembered, thanks to the help of one of our faithful uh, listeners, uh, Jim Godin. <laughs> <laughs> So, so is that the one that he was laughing to me about the other day? Right yes. after, right after we talked about you know making mistakes and all that, uh, <laughs> it was funny. I you know for for the listeners, I mentioned it before the show when I was trying to remember what he said. Um, but you know, I uh, I met up with Jim last week to play a different game, and one of the first things he's like, "So I was listening to the podcast, and this 
and he was wrong right after he said, you know, was talking about having been wrong before and da da da. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way too super eager. It so, was it was hashtag hilarious. Big Jim. <laughs> Jim. Ooh, I haven't broke that uh, hashtag out in a bit. <laughs> um so anybody who uh oh no, they this this won't air before uh for the 19th yeah the 19th yeah uh so you know the event in july where you're coming out here to uh to uh the atlanta area the dust weekend and gigabytes on the weekend of the 13th and 14th of july alicia's all smiles now yeah Yeah. the world may not burn folks (laughs) there may be hope for it we, no, we are looking forward to it. It's gonna be a, it's, it's gonna be a, fun. it's gonna be a fun, a fun thing. We're gonna have plenty of different games with plenty of different scenarios, all really fun. So yeah, it should be, should be fun for everyone. Um, so real quick because I, I decided to look at the recon dogs. Um, do they actually have a have a bite over five or over in for the vehicles? I'm checking because. I'm looking in the app, so though uh, I know Jim works hard on trying to make sure that everything's right in there, sometimes oh, things yeah. slip by. No, 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 on that he's good. Okay, so yeah. actually they can't even bite vehicles. Yeah, so which makes sense, but yeah, uh, it does. I mean, you know, they're yeah. they're not cybernetically enhanced dogs, or yes. you know, just augmented dogs. They yeah. should be. Yeah, the shotguns that can hit uh, vehicles, not the dogs. So yeah, you're gonna grapple infantry units, but you're not gonna grapple vehicles. So now, yeah. one thing, totally not talking anything, Axis at this point. <laughs> but uh, um, what I didn't realize, and I specifically played it where they didn't have this, mm-hmm. because I thought it was the dogs got the first strike. The dog bites, but it's actually the whole unit. It's the you know, so the people on the base get it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. First strike so, is for everyone. Yeah, I I don't know why I was giving because and I specifically rolled it where it was two first strike and then three at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nope, it, nope. I, and anyways, yeah. So you know, just for anyone that has listened this far to us ramble for a few extra minutes, <laughs> <clears throat> that little piece of FYI, don't do what <laughs> I did, and don't listen to Greg on uh, rules. Don't listen to me ever. Just go double check the rules. You, you should listen to them, but it's it's trust but verify. That's that's the phrasing. We have a rule book for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> the the you know take it with a grain of salt it is in full effect oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and alicia's sitting here nodding the whole time <laughs> <laughs> and greg looks to check and she just grins evilly at him <laughs> i love it all right well anything else um, no. I think we got off on uh, enough little tangents there at the end. No, we're good. I'm looking forward to doing the SSU. Oh, that'll warm Nathan's poor little pirate heart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're not going to do the SSU next. We're going to do mercenaries. And- <laughs> 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 but <laughs> on that note, uh, thank you everyone who has listened uh, and uh, we were actually talking about it before the show started uh, you know a lot of positive feedback on everything so we uh, we really appreciate that as well uh, and if there's anything you do want to let us know about you know, throw it in one of the comments send us an email a message doesn't matter uh, you know we we've responded to all of it to include uh where people just pick on us for writing words wrong because it's really late and (laughs) 
and I fail at typing anyways. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's Josh. Josh is really, uh, is really a prankster. So. Oh, I know. And, and <laughs> totally had me lost. Had me going for a few minutes trying to figure out what, what was going on. I was like, huh? What? Yeah, I had to reread it twice also. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, look up. <laughs> it's like, damn it. <laughs> no, um, it's it's uh, definitely been, been fun and interesting. Yeah. So to all our listeners, thank you and stay dusty. <laughs> <laughs>